Yeah. So as we get deeper into this, I wanted to make sure because uh, I wanted to make sure I brought something up because I don't think I ever like said it aloud while we were playing this. Yeah. Uh, as we're getting deeper and deeper into um, Keiichi's paranoia, right? Mm-hmm. I'm reminded of one of the visual novel genres that isn't as popular nowadays, but was definitely having its heyday around the time. And that's uh, the Denpa. Like, the Denpa uh, VN definitely was was in its prime. Uh, you know, talking about uh, exploring natures of delusion and that kind of, and how it would affect and how um, disillusioned young men would see the world around them. Um, I can't help but feel that this is definitely either a commentary maybe not a deconstruction but i have to i have to imagine that ryukishi 07 is aware of this Mm -hmm. right he's definitely and with someone with his with his history i imagine he's definitely got opinions on it Mm -hmm. i that that's something that that occurred to me after we finished the last episode and i was like you know what i that's that really is another through line here i am not super super familiar with with denpo works um, I think the only Denpa game we played on the channel was uh, Soundless, and that was uh, that was v- made very much after the heyday as an intentional kind of throwback. Mm. Love it, absolutely recommend it. Um, I've had an on again, off again relationship with like Super Heavy. <laughs> Is House of Leaves a Denpa book? That's a great question. Uh, <laughs> you can't, can't, when did it come out? Was that O two? Was that O two when House of Leaves was released? House no of Leaves idea. is Denpa. House of Leaves I, is Denpa. I, I think that's what we're getting at. <laughs> I know. I think House of Leaves is something entirely different. But <laughs> hold on, no, you're, I'm I'm stopping now to look this up. <laughs> two thousand. I'm sorry, it was two thousand, not two thousand two. <laughs> I knew it was much earlier than I thought it was, but yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, House of Leaves came out before Higarashi. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, enough of me talking about that stuff. You want to see us play this game, and you want to see me talk about our friend here. Who, again, I want to point out, has only been subject to his own paranoia so far. You kept asking me after we were done, like, well, what about the curse and stuff? And I'm like, so far we have no reason to suppose that what's happening to Keiichi right now and what happened in the past are at all related. Mm -hmm. There's just this convenient fiction... Or not? I don't want to call it that. There's this very large presumed history there that fits a convenient narrative that Keiichi has formed entirely on his own, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and there is very lit. Like every all the elements that are connecting it to this history of Oyashiro Sama's curse are things that he has basically invented for himself. There is no reason to believe that what is going on with him. Is it all related to what's happened before? Okay. I look forward to being wrong about that. That'd be cool. But like in my mind, there's still two separate things that are deserving their own answers at the moment. Mm-hmm. I think the thing I keep pushing back on is you keep saying he's only subject to his own paranoia. And I don't, I don't think it's only. It seems largely to be the case. But at the same time, we're learning very real details of some fucking weird shit that's going on. Oh, absolutely. He is learning real de- like real details about real shit that went on. And then his paranoia is taking that and going like, mm-hmm. but now how does that affect me? Yeah. He's got a bad case of main character syndrome. And that, and that's why I keep I, that's why I keep pushing back on only because I th- I think it's okay, it's important I, to think about like okay, I, yeah, is that what really is going on? Is it all in case right. she's happy? Be, I should be clearer when I say that. Because I don't think that, like, when I say that it's only his paranoia, I mean the stuff that we are currently witnessing, I mean largely the stuff that he is getting worked up about. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that, that that he's making up Tomatake's death or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that, like, um, all of these events, like these images of his friends and these misunderstandings of scenarios that he's been going through, that is on him. That is only him, and there's nothing connecting that to this imagined through line he's created. Fair enough. All right. Anyway, I squatted down for a bit, and when I came back to my senses, my entire room had changed drastically. I just realized my mouse isn't plugged in. This will be fun. 
The numbness in my head was gone, and I could slowly tell blood was flowing to my extremities again. How long had I been squatting here? How many minutes? Or had it been hours? It was almost as if the hands on the clock had stopped moving. The entire time my eyes were closed, till little time had passed. Really? The air in the room wasn't filled with that madness from before, only dull silence. <laughs> Excuse me. Rena wasn't there pitting my arms, and Mion wasn't there about to inject me with a needle. No way. Could it, could it be that all of it was a hallucination? There was no other presence in the room besides my own. It was the weirdest experience I've ever had. I was certainly with Rena and Mion. Yeah, and and that's that's like one of the things where like it, it keeps setting this up as if it has to all be a hallucination, or it has to all be real. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's clearly not the case. There is very much a reasonable explanation for a lot of these scenes that can be found with, you know, with most of their actions being reasonable and then Keiichi conveniently looking at one or two details in the exact wrong way. Mm -hmm. But I doubted my sanity for a moment, but I was also seized with some sort of comfort. (laughs) I guess that terrible ordeal was a hallucination. Neither Rena nor Mion. They wouldn't ever do something so terrible. My head grew hot. I could tell my emotions were welling up. And why? That wasn't a reason to cry. Then why? It was sorrow. Why was I so sad? I don't understand. I don't understand. <clears throat> kind to everyone, not discriminating against age or gender. Mion. That Mion was sprawled by the window. In an unnatural pose. Blood stained her a deep red from her head down to her chest. The bright crimson smeared on the walls that splatter had undoubtedly come from Mion. She always had that bright smile and was kind to me from the day I transferred. And Rena. That same Rena was slumped at my feet. Making the same pool of blood as Mion. I couldn't comprehend what had happened. Did someone come to save me? Did they, Then did they beat these two down with this metal bat? I finally noticed the weight in my right hand. How long had it been there? It was Satoshi's metal bat. It was covered in a deep red. There was no doubt that this was the weapon used to mutilate both of them. And I was holding that weapon. I was the only person in the house. Uh, I... Looking at this objectively, I couldn't think of anyone other than myself who could have done it. I... I... I did this? That's right, Keiichi Maibara. Of course I did it. I told myself gently as if coaxing myself. Hey, me. There's no reason for you to remember it, nor is there a need to regret it. Eat... Or be eaten. You get that, don't you? The blood. The blood. There's so much blood. Neither Rena nor Mion had moved an inch. It wasn't just a split forehead and a trickle of blood. Nothing so simple. The entire room was splattered with red that told me it didn't end with just two or three strikes. Were they... Were they dead? Both of them? The depths of my mind were calm, but on the surface I was panicking, agitated. Calm down, Keiichi Maibara. What happened to your usual calm self? Come on now, do like you always do. Throw your head back, take a deep breath. Come on. Once, twice, breathe deeply. Calm down. Calm down. I chanted that over and over in my head and relaxed. Color came back to my vision, and smells reinfused the air. At the same time, I remember what happened when I blacked out. Please don't give us a replay. I don't want to see this. Oh, had they? Uh huh. How how convenient for you. Who knows what's in that syringe? Permanent mark, not permanent marker, felt tip marker. That's what's in that syringe. 
Rena and Mion had attacked me. They were about to inject me with whatever caused the same symptoms as Tomatake-san. But right before that happened, I fought back. I twisted my whole body and threw Rena as she was pinning my arms. And then I followed through with my spin and rammed my foot as hard as I could into Mion's torso. It was soft. Rena tried jumping on me, so I tackled her as hard as I could and slammed her against the wall. I didn't let that brief moment of having them off balance slip by. Satoshi's bat was left carelessly by the side of my desk. Beep. At that moment, everything went pitch black. There was nothing recorded past this point in the videotape of my mind. No, that wasn't right. It wasn't that there was nothing recorded. It was recorded just fine, just the other me inside of myself had told me not to look and turned off the TV. Just because the screen had gone black and I couldn't see it, didn't mean the videotape within me hadn't recorded it. The TV was just cut off, the video was still playing. The tape within me creaking all along, still playing. On the other end of that pitch black screen, that horrifying video was still playing on. It's also worth notice noticing that Keiichi keeps referring to, like, the other me, the other me inside of me. Mm -hmm. And um, we had seen a couple of scenes in the tips talking about multiple personality. Yeah. Right? But it was always couches in, like, oh, what could explain Rena's, mm -hmm. you know, attitudes and stuff. It could be some of that is turned on is actually about Keiichi. Compared to this, though, the scene right before my eyes was... Still so difficult to take in. There was blood splattered everywhere on the walls. The two of them in these unnatural poses. Not a sign of movement from them. I couldn't even tell if they were breathing. No matter what the circumstances were, my friends, these girls... I had... I had attacked them. I may have even killed them. If I hadn't done this, I would have been the one done for. B balancing that out on an imaginary scale, it, it felt odd that I'd even feel bad about it. Even if it was a little bit excessive, this was justifiable self-defense. Uh, the proof was all here. The two of them collapsed here in Mion's syringe. Mion's syringe filled with some unknown drug would certainly solve the mystery surrounding the incident with Tomatake-san. And from the fact that both of these two were involved, they'd be able to pick out the criminals one after the other. Still, I I might be suspected for this, but that, that was just fine. Anyway, now this should be a police affair. This wouldn't fade into the darkness like Rena's past incidents. As long as the police were involved, that should bring this case to a close. They'll probably revisit their investigation on the chain of incidents. Oh, Ishisan would. He would definitely get to the bottom of it. Meaning, my wish of not wanting to die, of wanting to know the truth, that would be fulfilled in its most basic form. It's all a matter of time now. The doctor Rena called should be getting here soon. I'll confess everything to him. I needed to contact Oishi-san. Is the doctor the doc? Well, no, they they obviously got someone because they thought he was hurt, right? I was thinking, like, is the doctor just Rika to come deliver head pats? <laughs> At that moment, I remembered. Besides the doctor, a manager had been called. It was easy to imagine that they were someone deeply involved with the incidents, judging from Rena and Mion's conversation. The ache in my chest caused by the gruesome deed I'd done dissipated rapidly. It was not over yet. This place was no longer safe. Stay calm, Keiichi Maibara. It's not over yet. I needed to live long enough to tell the police of this incident. At that moment, I felt like I heard someone's voice from outside. Since people were speaking to us, mean there was more than one person. I moved the curtain ever so slightly and peered outside. It was a bizarre sight. 
About four or five grown men were all gathered at the gate. They very much resembled the two men who had assaulted me at the dam site today. Those two might even be among them. There was one person there wearing a white coat, but he didn't look like a doctor at all. My gut told me he was in disguise, only posing as a doctor. That guy would probably ring the bell and get me to open the front door. Pretend to be a doctor and to get me to open the door, and the rest of them would all rush in at once. At that moment, I saw the car parked behind the men, and my heart nearly skipped a beat. The white van. No mistaking it. That van, the one that had tried to run me down. The man in the white coat entered the gate and headed toward the front door. The rest of the men hid in the bushes and watched him. I probably couldn't pretend I wasn't home. Undoubtedly, they just break the window and enter. I needed to get out of here somehow. And then use a public phone to contact Oishi-san. Then meet up somewhere. First of all, I need a weapon. Then shoes. Before all that, there was one thing I had to do. I had no intention of dying. I'd live and reveal the truth about this nonsensical curse of Oyashiro-sama. But what happened from here on, regardless of how determined I was, may bring about my demise. And that was why there was one thing more important than getting out of here right now. The syringe that you need? That that presumably vital piece of evidence that you haven't gone to grab? You know what, never mind. <laughs> I need to get that clock out quickly and take down the note hidden behind it. God damn it, the tape was sticking to it so fast. It'd be fine if it was torn a little. I opened up the slightly torn note and began writing another passage with a ballpoint pen. I wasn't able to inform Oishi-san that the only thing I could rely on was this note. I never thought a piece of torn, college-ruled notebook paper could be this reliable before. I had no time. I had to write only what I knew right now. I needed to leave some sort of information that would leave them to uncover the truth. Rena and Mion are conspirators of the perpetrators. This was an undeniable fact. I still didn't want to believe it, but it was a fact. Anyway... I'd leave all the information that would help lead them to the finding the perpetrators. There were four or five adults, maybe more. They have a white van. This was everything I was able to see from the window. There may be more. So there was that unidentified person known as the manager. To begin with, the term manager didn't even mesh with Hinamizawa at all. If they were going to include managers from past incidents, then the only one is the construction foreman, the victim from the first murder. The very first victim. In the chain of incidents. Killed in a lynching, his body divided into six pieces. His right arm was never discovered. The police should have confirmed that death. But Rena and Mion did both call him manager. They said manager. They wouldn't use that term to refer to someone who was dead, would they? The police would never even conceive that someone who was deceased could be involved. Could that be some sort of oversight? I, I didn't know. But even if I didn't know, it, it could be a big hint for Oishi-san. That's right. They needed to start fresh from the first incident. It wasn't just a simple dismemberment, but the start of the string of mysterious deaths that would follow. So then, there must be something hidden there. Please reinvestigate the victim from the first dismemberment incident. He's alive. His death should have been established after an autopsy. Logically, you would think as much, but was that really the case? Could it have been some sort of ploy that they were able to deceive the police with? I, I shouldn't jump to conclusions, but he may still be alive. I had no time to ponder that right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's something even more important I needed to write. Tomatake-san's death was from an unknown drug. That's right. That drug, it was an irreplaceable piece of evidence. No doubt, just by having this, everything would be uncovered. I couldn't just leave that vital clue lying on the floor. The syringe is proof. Writing that down, I sucked the syringe onto the back of the clock with plenty of tape. So it absolutely would not slip out and fall to the floor. Firmly. Firmly! The bell rang. They were here. I couldn't write any more. But even still, there was one last thing I had to write. I have no idea why it has become like this. This may be the closest thing to the truth out of everything I wrote on this note. If you're reading this, then I am probably already dead. They may or may not find my body. I was going to write out everything that could happen. Either dying from the curse, or being demoned away. You who are reading this, please uncover the truth. That is my only desire. With this, my last will and testament was complete. I wasn't certain that I was going to die, but it was my final plea, just in case. I folded the note, stuck it back onto the stuck it onto the back of the clock, and returned the clock back to its usual spot. Couldn't help but pray. Oh, Ishisa. 
If something happens to me, I leave the rest to you. After that, I gazed down silently at Rena and Mion. This was probably the last time we'd ever see one another. Rena, Mion. I... I really had thought all of us were friends. But why did it end up like this? I never had any fun in my previous school. I only worried about standardized test scores, about if the school I hoped to get into was where I really wanted to go, or if it was just a safety net. That was all I talked about. It was a dull life. The people I called friends were also my rivals in studying and competitions, and personal records and standardized test scores. Everyone here taught me how unhealthy that lifestyle was. This month was really fun. Making a fuss over lunch, making a fuss over the club, making a fuss over the festival. Something hot began dripping from my face. Uncontrollable tears. I should have had no obligation to shed tears for them, but they wouldn't stop. Even if they were after my life, even if they were trying to kill me. Everything that happened this month, I wouldn't forget it. Could it be those happy days were all of a sudden as well? Was it all a trap meticulously orchestrated up until today to ensnare me? Could it have been that I just arbitrarily assumed they were my friends? <laughs> that couldn't have been the case. Both both Rena and Mihon, they really were my friends. Those happy days, there was nothing fake or unclear about them. Someone, probably, forced them to try to kill me. Or their minds were taken over, possessed by the supernatural entity known as Oyashiro-sama. Regardless... Both Rena and Mion. They were the best friends ever. They were coming after me. It wasn't of their own volition. Wait. They weren't the kind of people to sell off their friends, regardless of whether or not they were forced. There's no way such a thing like being possessed by Orishiro Sama can happen in reality. And then, did the real Rena and the real Mion come after me? Ugh, what was I thinking? Ugh, ugh, what a silly, dumb idea. Having beaten down both Rena and Mion, I was still debating if they were the real ones or fakes. There was no real or fake. Only the reality that was before me, Rena and Mion, were sprawled out at my feet. That was the only truth. I was only trying. Trying to twist the facts to my benefit. That I had beaten my friends to death. No matter how I spun it. It wouldn't change reality. Rena and Mion were both dead. It felt like there was a crack in the dam of strange emotions that I was holding back. It felt like my calm state, which was nothing more than a bluff, had receded, and in that opening, insanity was leaking out. I killed them. I killed them. Rena and Mion, I killed them! The doorbell rang once again. The unrelenting echo pulled me back into a state of composure once again. I didn't have a moment to spare. Quickly, I needed to get away. I, I didn't want to die. I would uncover everything after that. The, the identity of whoever or whatever had pushed me this far. Even if I had to drink mud and eat grass, I would survive. I would survive. I would definitely survive. I killed Rena for that very reason. I also killed Mion. I went that far just to keep living. So I can't die. For my sake and for the sake of the late Rena and Mion, I have to survive. I ran toward the door and grabbed my shoes. The doorbell rang again as if to urge me on. Behind this single, solitary door, they were there. Quick point of order. Mm -hmm. Were Keiji's folks supposed to be home by now? I don't recall. Right? Because this is the day after they had gone to Tokyo. Yeah. 
aren't they supposed to be? And this is well into the evening now. Yeah. Aren't they supposed to be back? But it, where are they? What's up with them? Good question. I don't recall if it was established how long they planned to be away. That's true. Keiichi seems to want to get off the phone right away and not talk about it. <laughs> true. That is true. But uh, I, I just uh, just having trouble keeping track of what day yeah. is which. I'm pretty sure that this was after, after they were supposed to be back by now, but I think whatever. so, too. Anyway, let me get back into mania here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm do- I'm doing Keiichi justice here, but I hope he's <laughs> <laughs> keeping quiet. I headed toward the kitchen, headed toward the back door. Before opening the back door, I put my ear to it and checked for people outside. No one. After I put on my shoes, I opened the door slowly so as not to make a sound. There it is, the back door. A piercing voice echoed out. That voice stabbed through me, setting my hair on end. I had to run. Get out of here, Keiichi. One after the other, I felt like st- I felt stuff like rationale and intelligence, those things you use when you have time to spare, spill out of me. I didn't feel any pain from the branches scratching my arms and forehead. My autonomously pulsing heart also felt neither fatigue nor pain. My entire being just wished to live. There was nothing else it desired probably had no complaints whatsoever, so of course I couldn't feel fatigue. I just ran, just recklessly rushing in the direction I was already headed. Even if no one was chasing after me, I'd still be running like this. There wasn't a thought in my mind about where I was headed. Turning around, I felt a presence right next to me. That presence was, without a doubt, chasing me like my shadow. If I took even one misstep, I would be devoured. That's what I thought. So, I didn't turn around. I didn't stop. I ran at full speed. Is it like, I have quack. no idea what sound effect that's supposed to be. Oh, qua. It's the qua. Qua, 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 qua. Oh. Qua, 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 qua. That was the chirping of the Higarashi telling me that it was evening. Trying to tell me something, and, and then I finally heard it. The wailing cry of the victims who didn't make it. Will I be joining them? I can't do a good uh, cicada, I'm sorry. Only the Higarashi knew. They knew everything. They definitely knew. So I ran towards where I could hear more of the Higarashi's chirps, but the farther I ran, the further away their chirping became. I couldn't get near to them. Why? Why are you all running away? Was it my fault? Was I the one to blame? Th- then I'll apologize. I'm sorry. 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 I felt that only the Higarashi knew. Good golly. <laughs> okay, she's perpetual normal one. Yeah, we just got an achievement called Chase by Shadows. Run from the truth of our crimes. Mm. The smoking room was filled with a cloud of cigarette smoke. The expensive smoke filter gave off some crackling electric noise, but it didn't seem like it was doing anything at all. The smoking room. The room just constantly emits a stream of smoke. Yeah, that's why it's the smoking room. Yep. Yep. You can't smoke in the smoking room. There's already too much smoke. There's already too much smoke. It's where you keep your magic pipe. You know? <laughs> That's where you keep the good shit. Why do smokers have to be shoved so far down this corridor where the sun didn't even reach? I recalled hearing that the tax revenue from the tobacco was about a tenth of the municipality's revenue. 
we were the most heavily taxed members of this municipality, so I really wish they'd show us a little more respect. We don't know who this is narrating now, do we? Yeah. Hmm, why would you discard the five monsu there? It's just decreasing your options. One of the younger detectives was having a staring contest with the Mahjong magazine called Next Turn. <laughs> you're still in ten pay if you cut the five manzu. If you're betting on a high tay, then shouldn't you be going into it with a mangan? <laughs> hey, Kuma-chan, look at the pond over there. They all discarded five manzu. It's a safe tile. You'd hate it if at the end game someone was sitting on a ten pay on the last turn now, wouldn't ya? I, I don't I don't have the Oishi in me right now. I, I, I can't <laughs> find it. <laughs> Say howdy do. Something like it going a bit more like this now. <laughs> Something about a ten pay and a five man zoo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there we go. There's that good old Oishi san. The kid let out another groan and put out a cigarette and then took another one. I just don't agree. Why would you reduce your own options? By the way, you can't call Ron with your winning tile in that high T. What? Why is that? And just then I heard a voice coming from down the hall. Are you here, Oishi son? You have a call from a civilian. <laughs> Whoa now, ain't that something? Well, I'll be seeing ya. Why can't you call Ron on it? Hold on for a second, Oishi son. Nope, too late. I got a call from a civilian. The man sitting in the seat Oishi son was heading toward waved at the telephone receiver. Outside line from a payphone. Oh, why, thank you. Sorry to keep you waiting. This here's Oishi. Who is it? Uh, uh, Oishi-san, hello! Well, if it ain't Maybera san why, good evening to you. From the tone of maybera Coon's voice, I already knew he was in quite a predicament. This was the first time maybera Coon had phoned me, and he was calling from a payphone. Please calm down. Did something happen now? Uh, well... Uh, uh, uh. His voice was erratic over the line. He had completely lost his sense of composure. After checking that no one else could hear, I prompted him in a hushed tone. What happened? Uh, I... 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 Calm down, Maybear San. I can have the local officers head to your location. I'll be there soon too, alright? I... I think that's... I think that's impossible. His voice was quivering and hoarse. He weren't surrounded by people even as he was making this call now, was he? May Barrisan, you're calling from a payphone right now, aren't you? Where is that payphone? There were no other sounds besides May Barracoon's voice. It had to be a phone booth. I scratched out a note and thrust it at my colleague sitting across from me. Hina Mizawa, phone booth. He understood quickly and hastily started on the internal lines. Calm down, May Barrisan. What is your current situation? It usually weren't a good idea to tell someone panic and to do so, but this was not a usual case. May Barracoon didn't just get in trouble, get away, and then call me. He was in the midst of something dangerous right now, but... Yelling at May Barracoon right now would just needlessly cause him to be even more frantic. May Barracoon wasn't just calling to seek help. He was trying to tell us something more than that. And whatever that was, if I didn't get it from this call, I was certain there would never be another chance. My colleague pushed a note in front of me. There's only one booth in Hinamizawa. A patrol car is on the way. <laughs> Five minutes. Patrol? <laughs> Do you... What's up? Patrol. <laughs> you don't like where I keep finding words? To... <laughs> I've decided this is my character trait. <laughs> That's too long. How many officers are in there? Uh, two. Not enough. If it was as I imagined, there were likely quite a few people surrounding May Barracoon. Everyone in this story has such a great, great propensity for making things up and rolling with it. <laughs> You have heard nothing from him other than that he's scared. You don't know that he's being surrounded. You've convinced yourself that is the case. Five minutes was too long. 
Did you call the officer stationed in Hinamizawa? He's scheduled to be on patrol. They're currently out, and it'll be impossible to contact them. God damn, if only we had invented cellular phones. <laughs> Kuma-chan, bring the car round. Understood. Hello? Oh, she said. <laughs> Hello, it's all right. I can hear you loud and clear. There was something wrong with May Barracoon. That weren't no normal coffin sound. Was that vomit? Or was it blood? Had he already been attacked? Was he injured? May Barracoon, the police are on their way. They'll be there in a couple of minutes, so hold on somehow. Hello, can you hear me? May Barracoon. I could hear on the other end of the line that he was having a coffin fit. Well, of course, because he just ran a whole far distance and he's out of shape. Mm-hmm. The worst possible situation popped into my head. Yeah, May Barrison, who was the culprit? How many are there? I... I thought... At first the culprit was human. <coughs> I couldn't tell if that was cough or vomiting. Are you all right, May Barrison? I thought the culprit was a person. And not Oyashiro Sama's curse. Up until right now. But I guess the end. <coughs> it was an intense bout of coughing and then vomiting. But I guess Oyashiro Sama does exist. No, he's. He's here. May Barasan, please, just calm down, please. I've been thinking it was strange for a while. <laughs> it's been following me this whole time. I run and run and run and run, but it just sticks to me like my shadow. Slowly, so slowly, it's digging itself into my back. May Barasan, are they? Are they right now, perhaps, right behind you? Behind me. Right. Behind me. Please, May Barrasan, I can't, I can tell you're scared, but please, who is it that's right behind you? I can't, I can't just look behind me. If I do, I'll, I'll. I understand that you're scared, but please tell me, you just need to turn around a little bit. Who is it? Who is behind you, May Barrasan? Right after I said that, I, I said I could hear him vomiting intensely. And what followed was a not marish sound. May Barrasan, it couldn't be that you're clawing out your own throat. There was no answer, but I could hear something like scratching. It was a bang, as if something was being hit. May Barracoon had probably dropped the receiver. I could hear groaning and vomiting over on the other end and repeating abnormal noise. Hello, hello, May Barrasan, hello! I knew how far away my voice would sound on the other end, but I couldn't help but shout. At that moment, I heard whispering coming from the other end. I couldn't tell what he was saying, but from the way he was saying it, he was talking to himself. Or was I talking to someone there? Hello, May Barrasan, are you there? Rather than whispering, it was some kind of mantra he was chanting over and over. I focused my senses trying to pick up on what he was saying. What was it that he was repeating? What exactly? Beep. Suddenly, the wine went dead. Did he use up his time? It's because it was a payphone. Con, sonnet. <laughs> oh, dramatic things that only work because payphones. <laughs> yeah, we really did lose a great narrative device. <laughs> because it cut out so abruptly. The last thing he said came out so clearly in my mind. Oishi-san, the car is good to go. Oishi-san? It was... I'm sorry. Oishi-san? That's what he was repeating over and over. He said, I'm sorry. I had a gut feeling. There was no longer a need to hurry. I could hear the chirp of the higarashi spilling in from the open window. Quee, 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 quee. I should have been able to hear them this entire time, but I just weren't paying no attention. Why did I focus on them all of a sudden? Quee, 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 quee. Were they trying to tell me something? Only the Higurashi knew. 
That's how I felt. That doesn't sound too good. Nope. July 1983. In Hinamizawa, a remote village near Shishiboni City, there was a murder involving two female students. The ca- subject is Keiji Maibara. The suspect called over his two female classmates, Rena Ryugu, Mion Sonazaki, to his house and beat them to death with a metal bat. The scene of the crime was the suspect's room on the second floor of his house. The inside of the room was covered with a significant quantity of splattered blood, and there were signs of a struggle with the victims. In addition to the scene of the crime, the entryway, living room, and kitchen all had traces of a struggle. Interesting. We never did hear about that. The entryway, the shoe rack, and wall had evidence of being impacted by strong blunt force. We did hear about that. We did hear about that. Believed to be the same bat as the murder weapon. Having no traces of blood, it's believed the destruction occurred before the murders. There's the possibility that the suspect overpowered his victims to keep them from fleeing. In the living room, the rug had been pulled back, then thrown aside. It's hard to believe that this had a connection to the struggle with the victims, and thus the reason for this remains unknown. We we know, though, don't we? We know what his reasoning was. In the kitchen, the garbage bag was torn apart, and its contents were spread out on the floor. Garbage was thrown about in the surrounding area, and handprints were believed to belong to the suspect were discovered. I believe the suspect had for some reason taken out the garbage and struck it with his fists. The reason for this remains unknown. In addition, there was a note stuck to the fridge. The words, was there a needle, were written on it. The meaning behind this remains unclear. Just in case, the garbage was searched, but a needle was not discovered. Through the garage door was functional. It had been left open ever since the suspect moved in. The garage door was found closed. The suspect's fingerprints were discovered on the garage door. The reason behind this remains unknown. That's interesting that it had been left open ever since they moved in, but he saw the need to close it. Mm -hmm. The suspect fled the scene of the crime. However, a patrolling officer in Amazawa local PD found the suspect collapsed inside of a phone booth. At the time of discovery, the suspect was unconscious and in critical condition. He was rushed to the local hospital for treatment but not, did not regain consciousness and died 24 hours later. The results of the autopsy indicate the immediate cause of death to have been hypovolemic shock. Determined the suspect had clawed at his own throat with his fingernails, and the resulting bleeding caused his death. Yuck. The similarity to the death of Tomatake-san the prior week. The police believe there had to be a connection and have opened an investigation. However, due to the wishes of the local authorities, it'll be a confidential investigation. Due to the abnormal nature of the death, it was suspected the drugs were involved, but as with Tomatake-san, no traces were discovered. What prompted all this remains inexplicable, and as such, this case is being treated as an act committed on impulse. However, with several accounts of the suspect's bizarre behavior leading up to the incident, it's possible this was premeditated. Separated from his group of friends, isolation, inexplicable behavior. Several days before the incident, the suspect began carrying around a metal bat. The suspect was observed displaying aggressive behavior, as well as talking to himself at school. Classmates have actually heard portions of what he was saying. Two days before the incident, the suspect declared to his parents the possibility of his death. Due to these circumstances, the police have begun an investigation on the possibility that this crime was not committed on impulse, but was instead planned several days in advance. Afterwards, a note was found in the suspect's room that he had written himself. The note was written on two sheets from a B5 college ruled notebook that had each been torn in half, and as if trying to conceal it was stuck hidden behind a clock on the wall. The contents are as written in the appendix. The police believe it to be strongly related to the incident. The police changed their line of investigation based on the possibility that the suspect was involved in some sort of incident himself. However, no further clues were found, casting doubt on the credibility of the note. Was the crime impulse? Impulsive or premeditated? The situation unclear, no further developments. The case has been labeled as unresolved. However, the following year, suspicion arose regarding the nature of the note. The note was not written on two halves of B5 paper from two separate sheets, but was originally a single sheet of B5 paper. In order to erase several lines from the middle, someone had torn them out. Interesting. 
Judging from the size of the letters, the missing section is estimated to be two to three lines. It's highly probable the person who eliminated the lines in question is not the suspect. In addition, judging from the traces of large quantities of cellophane tape being stuck to the back of the clock, speculation that something other than the note was stuck there has arisen. The person who first discovered the crime was a detective rumored to have a connection with the incident. Corrado Oishi. He underwent voluntary questioning, but denies involvement in any damages to the note. The Suspect's Note I, Keiichi Maibara, am in fear for my life. I do not know why they are after my life. The only thing I do know is that it has to do with Oyashiro Sama's curse. Rena and Mion are conspirators of the perpetrators. There are four or five adults, maybe more. They have a white van. This is all in the first sheet. Everything below this has been ripped out. This is from the second sheet. Everything above this has been ripped out. I have no idea why it has become like this. If you are reading this, then I am probably already dead. Though the only difference may be the presence or lack of a body. You who are reading this, please uncover the truth. That is my only desire. K.H. Mybra. Uh... If we check that back with what we just read and saw in the scenes earlier, do we know what line it is that was missing? I don't remember. I don't know either. I'll have to look back at that in post because I'm not scrolling back up. But uh, bam, bam. That's chapter one. <sighs> A new scenario has been unlocked. All wow. cast review session has become available. To play it, select extra on the title menu, then pick the all cast review session. Tea party? Tea party. Yeah! Oh! Time for a happy tea party with Keiichi and all of his very alive friends. Yeah! Great job keeping your friends alive, Keiichi. <laughs> the all cast review section. Oh, we could chapter jump even to see what was written we in the We should do that. Thank you for buying Higurashi When They Cry Onikakushi, a visual novel by O7th Expansion. How was it? If you enjoyed it, even a little bit, it would make me happy. Even a little bit is stretching it. That incredibly dark ending made me angry, you know. Made us angry. I didn't even get to star in the second half. <laughs> I know, they practically wrote me out of the whole thing. As I understand it, this Onikakushi chapter is supposed to be somewhat of a prologue to the entire series. Prologue have such an incredibly dark ending. Yeah, but doesn't that happen sometimes? The player digging through the story in order to avoid a bad ending is the point of these types of games, after all. What if you just fucked up while you were playing? <laughs> you, Shit, what you if I fucked avoided up? This? I fucked up, you're right. What if you just... What if you didn't read the tips? What if that was it? What Shit. if you got too engrossed in the paranoia? Yeah, yeah, you yeah better that's replay on me. it. That's on me. <laughs> Are you done? It's still just the first chapter. I'm looking forward to the next one. What happens in the next chapter? Rena, do you know? Yeah, they said the next chapter will introduce another aspect of the story. Excellent. So we don't even have all the angles yet. That's true. Okay, that's good. That's a strange way of putting it. What does that even mean? In this chapter, they introduced the string of mysterious deaths that were happening in Hinamizawa recently, right? The next chapter will introduce some of the history of Hinamizawa. <laughs> With one strange event happening after another, I get totally lost. What exactly is Oyashiro-sama's curse about? Actually, what is Oyashiro-sama to begin with? They didn't explain it much. Hmm, I haven't heard much about it, but I have kind of a bad feeling about it. <laughs> you haven't heard much about it, and yet you very much believe it exists. Why would I know anything about this Oyashiro-sama stuff? I'm not from here. Yes, you are. Okay, stop this. It feels like it'll be another one of those scary stories where somebody gets cursed again. <laughs> Tough luck, eh, Kei-chan? 
What kind of curse is he going to get hit with this time? <laughs> However, I am looking forward to seeing what kind of story it is going to be. Saw for being late, my bad, my bad. Hey, everybody, good work today. Same to you. Huh? Where's Kei-chan? Uh, Kei Chikun is already off reading the script for the next chapter. It must be hard being the main character. <laughs> huh, that's too bad. He could have at least poked in to say hello. Nah, then we would have to done drawn him a character sprite. <laughs> It's probably because he doesn't have any character art, so he couldn't poke his head in even if he wanted to. <laughs> Thanks, Rika. Rika-san, that's what we refer to as a personal problem. <laughs> you don't have a character sprite? Try getting good. <laughs> Skill issue. I grew my character sprite by doing push-ups. In any case, that story really was a lot of trouble, especially for Keiichi-kun and Renachan. Trouble? That was the mother of all bad ends! I wonder, what was the identity of the thing that attacked Keiichi-kun? Uh, my theory is that it was the work of people made to look like a curse. But at the end, Keiichi made that phone call. Yeah, I also thought that call was strange. At that point, Keichan should have been certain that the culprits were people. That really was a strange phone call, wasn't it? it? Almost sounded like he was being chased around by a ghost or something. Just from that phone call, it really makes me think it was the work of a curse after all. Well, since we're all here, why don't we all share our theories, huh? Let's start with Sonozaki saying. I absolutely believe it was people. I think it was a man-made incident that was just imitating the strange folklore floating around Hinamizawa. Certainly, every year on the day of the festival, for another link in the chain of mysterious deaths to happen certainly is suspicious. That so-called chain of mysterious deaths is definitely somebody trying to reenact the folklore. Definitely. I think it was the curse! Looking at the scene where Keiji saw went berserk in the entryway, and the last scene with the phone call, I just couldn't come up to the conclusion that a person was the culprit. I... <laughs> when you say it that way, it really wasn't the type of scene that would make you think it was the work of an actual person. Yeah, but even then, I still think it was a person who did it. That last scene and the one with the entryway, I... I think it might have been a delusional episode brought about by post-traumatic stress disorder. I want to know what's going on anymore, even if you didn't use such complicated words. In other words, Keiichi was so scared that he was imagining things. Then, 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 what was the meaning behind that scene? What exactly was that mysterious presence behind him? A red herring, R-E-D-H-E-R-R-I-N-G. Michan, what do you mean by a red herring? Like old man Tomitake here said, that scene was the result of Keichan having a stress-induced delusion from being mentally cornered. To expand on that a bit further, it was a ploy to make the player think it was a curse. That's why it was a red herring. Uh, when you say it like that... But... but uh. <laughs> well, it just means that there's that possibility. In that case, the theory that Oishi-san proposed during the story that it was a conspiracy by the villagers was correct? What does the man himself have to say about that? Oh, me? <laughs> well, huh. Well, now. Kind of make you think now, don't it? Huh? I totally thought that Oishi-san would be behind the people explanation. Well, during the story, I said it was definitely the work of people, but if a person was really to blame, then... That leaves a lot of loose ends now, don't it? Like what? Let us hear what Detective Oishi-san's theory is. Well, first of all, if a human is the culprit, then there has to be a motive, right? In other words, someone has to be gaining something from it. You can't neglect the heart, right? <laughs> someone told me that once. So, what you mean is, if this was the work of people, there would have to be something gained from causing the chain of mysterious deaths. Well, ain't that right, little lady. I felt that someone could have benefited from the deaths of the people related to the dam development, but the recent victims weren't related to that at all. First off, who benefits from killing Keiichi-kun? 
I see. If you say it like that, my case is kind of weak, too. I mean, none of your money was stolen, right? There's no way it's human culprits. But that's not everything there is to it, right? Like Michan just said, there might have been some sort of reason for them to reenact the folklore. Exactly. This wasn't a murder where you consider the typical motives. It makes me think that this was most likely some sort of ritualistic murder to reenact the blood-stained history of the village. So, I'll ask the question of the hour. Who gains from this reenactment? It's not about simple benefit. It's a more psychological reason. I think that maybe this was an act of revenge. Something native to the region. Fate was unable to be fooled this time around. Well, I see now. A member of some repressed family looking to air out an old grudge of their ancestors. Something like that? Hmm, I don't like the smell of that one bit. Then what is it? It couldn't be that you're leaning toward the curse explanation, Oishi-san. <laughs> that's right, that's right! The man playing the detective said so! It has decided it was a curse! If, like how Mae Barasan said during the story, it was the case that Oyashiro-sama possessed Rena and Zonazaki-san and committed those horrible acts, that would fit the evidence the most now, won't it? As much as I hate to say it. Um, actually, I'm of the same opinion as Oishi-san. I can't come up with any other explanation for the normally kind Rena and Michan to suddenly start acting strange like that. About that. It may sound strange coming from the person herself, but I think that I, Mion, did it. I'm just the type. I even <laughs> I was even carrying a weapon. Yep. I don't get what Mi is saying. I'd like an explanation. Oh, sorry. In other words, I think this may end up being a really cruel story. <laughs> huh, wait, Michan, you don't mean that she went in, killed Rena, made it look like she, made her look like she was also dead. She played dead, then went out to chase Keiichi afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We never did have anyone confirm that the bodies were dead. That's true. We didn't have it in red. <laughs> If you follow the trail of evidence to the very end, that's how it would seem. I also have my suspicions. In other words, Renasan and Sonozaki san both actually had those personalities to begin with, and they were merely deceiving Maybera san from the beginning. Am I right? Well, I don't like that at all! This is all the curse's fault! Renasan and me on side and everybody else are all kind and nice people! Plus, that still doesn't answer the why. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that, too. I think that Rena and Mion-chan are really good people at heart. I think that during the story, they definitely were possessed by something. So, Rena also thinks it was a curse. Now, let me ask everybody who thinks it was a curse. There has to be a reason for a curse, right? I don't think there would be something indiscriminately cursing everything. Can somebody explain that? A uh, curse is a curse. Human logic won't get us anywhere. Just accept what's put before you. Just accept what's put before you. <laughs> Sadoko-chan, a personified deity, is in the end nothing more than the creation of people. That's why their method of thinking is also understandable to humans. Just take a look at the Greek pantheon. They cry, get angry, get jealous. Basically, they're just like humans. Uh, so what you're saying is that Oyashiro-sama is cursing people with some benefit in mind? That's an odd way of putting it, but basically yes. Well now, that's why they say far from Jupiter, far from his thunder, yo. <laughs> Y'all got a point. Basically, it doesn't matter if it's Oyashiro-sama or humans, there has to be a reason. Even in the very first one, it's all about why, why, <laughs> why, why, why. <laughs> Don't get caught up in the how. The why is what's important. <laughs> and that's also why I was kind of frustrated because we've gotten so little of the why. I feel like a lot of my why was based on speculation, based on the, the girls' home lives, right? Mm -hmm. But like, but I really feel like 
this is almost cruel because there's almost not enough in this first one for me to get a good handle on the why, the why, why. And they're, they're really playing with us here. It's like, oh, it's all a conspiracy of people. Oh, it's all a supernatural curse. Batting these reasons back and forth that superficially make sense or even straight up make sense and are things we should think about. But does it really mean that those are the options we get to pick between? Right. <laughs> it's like, like I, I, I mean, we're not quite done here yet. But yeah, it's like... It's another way of like trapping you into thinking like, are these the only options, right? <laughs> this is... <sighs> but... But Rico, what if that reason isn't clear then? I don't know. <laughs> That's right. This is still just the prologue. There's still a lot of stuff that hasn't been revealed yet. Yeah. It's hard to come up with any more theories at this point. God damn it. No, I won't be satisfied until this is all made clear. Mion san seems rather particular about this as well. I have to win at the mystery. I it's not about winning. It's always about winning. I <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We'll just make the best with what we know. Doesn't this feel interesting? Like the club a little bit? Are we people? that are playing fictionalized versions of ourselves? <laughs> or are we the characters in the story, but also here talking about our lives? I try not to think about that stuff. It gives me a real headache. I... <laughs> Makes me want to tear at my throat. I... Okay, don't... Don't... No, please. Don't... Don't do that. I'm small and... I'm a literal child. I need my adult figures around. <laughs> Uh, yeah. If you put it that way, it does seem interesting. Well then, let's summarize for all y'all. Ah, uh, let's see, I think it was a curse. Tomatake-kun thinks it was people, right? Yeah, I'll go with it being people. I also agree with the people explanation. That's not to say I hate such fantastic things as curses. But in this particular case, the connection to a curse is a little weak. To for the people explanation then. Rana San was on the curse side of things from the beginning, right? Yep. Sadoko chan and I believe it was a curse, right? Yeah! I definitely think it was a curse! People who say that Rana and Neon san were evil to begin with are more befitting of a curse! Well Ah I don't want to believe that my own personality was that twisted. But I have to be cool when I'm in club mode. If I base my choice on just emotion, I'll regret it, you know? Well now, well now. It don't really matter which side you pick now, does it? Huh? Rika-chan hasn't said anything yet. What do you think? I don't think that Oyashiro-sama is a bad god. Huh. That's an interesting opinion. I don't want to worship some bad god that just curses people. I'd like a generous god more than one that curses. That's right, Rika-chan is a shrine maiden. Yep, good opinion. <laughs> then what? If Rika-chan doesn't believe that it was Oyashiro-sama, then do you think the perpetrators were human after all? No, she thinks that it was Oyashiro-sama and that Oyashiro-sama was justified. <laughs> we'll just go with that. <laughs> Well, now, now. That means the votes are split right down the middle, aren't they? Half of us think it was a curse, and the other half think it was people, huh? Renachan, just for reference, what did the test players who played the beta version think? Hmm, yeah, there were a lot more players who believed in the people explanation. See, see, right there. Our veteran comrades are cool, collected, and very observant. But the beta version, oh, beta version, I can't say hard words, I don't know Greek. But the beta <laughs> version only finished partway through the story. That's okay. Rika, you're a literal child. <laughs> That's right. Even the people who played the beta might change their minds if they got through to the very end. What should we do then? This means that the opinions are still split. It's no fun if we don't settle this. Uh, we need there to be an odd number of judges. In other words, we need one more opinion. 
Ah, perfect timing then. Why don't we ask Kei Chikun himself? Let's call him. The opinion of the victim himself is very valuable. Since that's decided, it's time for the phone. They dial the phone and get only the sounds of horrible, bloody oh, gurgling and vomiting. Oh, 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 oh. Hello, Kei Chikun. It's Rena. Are you busy with work right now? Oh, yeah, really busy. Just when I thought I'd get a break because the chapter's over, it's already time for the next one. How's Kei Chan? Busy? Yeah, he's moping. I can hear you, you know. Must be nice having a wrap up party. I wanted to go too. You can come if you get some character art for yourself. Ugh. Rika, that's a secret. Just do push ups. I. Rika, it's a secret. <laughs> Uh, sorry about that, Kei Chikun. Anyways, during the current chapter, Kei Chikun, didn't you die? We were just talking about who the culprit might be. Basically, we're deadlocked on whether it was people or Oyashiro Sama's curse that killed you. Oh, I'm really sorry. Oh. I I'm really sorry. Even though you're busy reviewing the script, Kei Chikun, which do you think it was? Well, that's obvious, ain't it? Which? Isn't it both of them? Targeted by suspicious people for the village, and then cursed by some strange Oyashiro-sama on top of that. It's both humans and their curse. Everyone's just picking on me. So very, very pitiful. Next time, I'll pat you on the head for you. Well, thank you, Rika. That's awful kind of you. In the end, the opinions still split, huh? I'll think this over again. We might have missed something. Well then, please look forward to the next release. Higurashi when they cry, Watanagashi. Oh, that's fun! That's such different character from the Umineko tea parties. <laughs> I won't go into like super detail on them because we don't want to spoil anything, but uh, it's a very different character. But in some ways, pretty similar also. In some ways, because it's also about talking about the story and like, but yeah, it's, it, wow. Is that it? That's it. Do we want to check the... Um, I don't remember chapter? it right now. <laughs> um, how far in the chapter is it going to be? I think 15-2 maybe? It'd be fine if it was torn a little. Makes it sound like he torn it himself. I opened up the slightly torn note and began writing another passage in ballpoint pen. All right. Ren and Mion are conspirators of the perpetrators. That was in what we saw before. Mm hmm Was it in the first half or the second half? That was in the first half. There are four or five adults, maybe more. They have a white van. That was there. Mm-hmm. So the line... Oh, it's the line about... It is. There is a missing line. There absolutely is a missing line. Please, Please reinvestigate, reinvestigate the victim from the dismemberment incident. He's alive. That is gone from the notes that the police found. Wow. Along with whatever he taped to the back of the clock. I didn't expect there to actually... Along with, assuming he did tape something. Mm-hmm. I don't think that he taped anything back there to begin with. But. Mm. Pretty weird. Please reinvestigate the victim from the dismemberment incident. He's alive. Let's just double check that the next line was on there. The death was from an unknown drug. Was that on there? I think that one was on there. I don't think it was. This syringe is proof. Right, that everything about the syringe. Uh, yeah, everything up through the syringe as well. Yeah. So... Unknown drug removed. Reinvestigate the first incident. Dude's alive. Removed. And Matching also a syringe, there's the syringe removed. Interesting. This is actually the first legitimately convincing piece that there <laughs> might be. A this right here is genuinely the first thing in this. The first thing where I look at it and I'm like, huh, this actually might be, he might be onto something here. This is the first thing that's really convinced me of that. What the fuck could that mean, man? Yeah, that's fascinating. Especially if it was um, 
And now it's annoying me that we don't have, like, we don't know for sure who was dead or what, but that's not the, that's not important right now. This It's interesting that it's those lines that came out. And we do know that the doctor and the manager were supposed to come to this very house. The doctor. So there would be people who get here before the police. And the man. Surgeon. Yep. There would for certain be people here before the police could investigate. I will be perfectly honest. I genuinely did not trust Keiichi-kun to be a, a sane narrator of his own actions up until now. Mm-hmm. And, and he I, probably st- wasn't. I still don't. He's probably not. But this is the first, this is still the first thing we've seen that is like, hmm, this is not explainable just by Keiichi being delusional. Unless he did simply accidentally tear the note. While putting it back up. Unless he did accidentally tear the note while putting... Well, no, because it was tear, torn. He tore it while pulling it back down, not while pulling it back up. Yep, and he wrote after it was torn slightly. He wrote after it was torn, is the thing. Um, Because I was okay with there not being a syringe there, just fucking whatever. I didn't think there was a syringe to begin with. But removing those lines specifically, that... That's interesting. I it will is. have to think on that. I will actually have to think on that. Oh. You'll have time. We can do a postmortem and we can well, talk Well, that's about actually what, what I was going to tell people about next. Um, we are going to do... Uh, we're going to do this a little differently now because the dynamic for this is different. And what we know is different. We're going to do a, a postmortem for each chapter. Uh, but we're going to wait for a little bit after we finish recording and after the episodes have aired. So that way, y'all have time to ask us quest or ask me or even ask Vivian questions, uh, either in the comment section down there or hit us up in the Discord and leave them there. The majority of them, however, are going to come from Vivian herself, since she has been through the game and knows what's up, mm-hmm. or been through the anime and knows what's up. She is going to be leading it with me and trying to pepper my logic and <laughs> ask me some pointed questions here. And don't worry, whatever I ask, I'll make sure it doesn't give you the answer. I'll make sure to lead you completely astray. She's been very good about giving me absolutely nothing to work with. Like, even when we're talking, like, at just at, uh, between sessions or whatever, uh, like, I'll try to, like, ask a question to see if I can weasel something out of her. She's like, do you really want me to answer that in that way? And I'm like, no, no, I don't. Until you get to the end and then you go back and rewatch this and are like, Oh, no, it was right there. It was right there the whole time. Uh, anyway, that's all we've got for you. I hope you're enjoying this so far. Um, leave your questions either in the comment section or in the Discord. Uh, and remember that we are going to be taking a break between chapters, just spacing them out a little bit so it's not just overwhelming only this all the time. But we hope you'll look forward to when we start Chapter 2, everyone. We'll see you then. Bye. Peace, y'all. Hey, nerds, you thought the episode was done. But it's not. But it's not. We found Renapon. So it turns out that there were some mini games that came with each. Uh, was it all of them or just the first couple releases of? I you think, would know better than I I think I would. Uh, all the question arcs had them. All the question arcs had them. We found a way to. Oh, this is delightful. <laughs> we fa- managed to find a version of them. In order to give you the complete Higurashi experience, we it would be remiss to not show you the game that comes with the first arc, Rena Pow. <laughs> Just to be clear, by the way, th- this is being recorded far after we're done with everything else. This is like Rena Pow. Wow. Oh, yeah. All right, hold on. What do I? What do I do? Choose the mode, okay? They knew. There's a story mode. Choose the mode, K. Oh, they knew. What story is story mode? Story mode. Choose your stage, okay? All right. What do I do here? I'm sure they'll say. How do I? Sure, looks like the same controls as usual for now. All right. Do you want to read this since you're Rena? Sure. Although I don't know whether or not Rena's re- the one reading right. this, but I'll do it. Okay, do it anyway. Okay, let's do that bit over again. Hey, hey, aren't you giving us two completely different answers here? Mio didn't seem amused at how quickly <laughs> quickly I gave in to Ren after teasing her so much. I, on the other hand, found Mion's annoyance highly amusing. So I hurried Rena forward, quickening our pace to leave Mion behind. Come on, Rena, forget about that sarcastic M- Mion. We'll go out tomorrow, just the two of us. Uh, uh, but Keiichi, 
Well, if you're okay with it. Hey, I'm the one who suggested we show you around. Don't you forget that, Keichi Maibara. It'll be such fun doing a picnic for two. Will you be bringing lunch, Rena? Oh, you want a lunch? Then I'll make one. I will. I will. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> oh, Don't this is me. Own. You forget about it either. Don't you forget it either, Rena? When word gets around that the two of you went to a hotel. <laughs> so yes, Rena will hurry on home and prepare lunch. I can't wait for tomorrow. Bye, Keichi. Bye, me. Rena skipped off like she was walking on the moon. The dust cloud settled, leaving me alone with Mion, who was splayed out flat on her back, more bruised than ever. Are you all right? Rena, Rena had to have been two meters away from you. Ever since you've come, her punches have gotten stronger. It's ruining Uncle's health. Doesn't she know better than to say stuff that gets her beat up? Maybe it's practice for her own slapstick comedy routine. Either way, she took a real life or death risk there. Don't leave us, Mion! You're the only one who could dodge Rena's jabs! I think she actually threw a knee in this time. Wow, isn't our friend an unbelievable boxing champion? She just might be a future contender in the world of extreme sports. You can't just let her beat you like that! Let's train for our revenge, Mion! Yeah, sure thing, Kay. Uncle Mion will back you up. And thus, Mion and I resolve to master Rena's amazing punches. Hold it right there! <laughs> this is suddenly much more of a commitment than I thought was going to. <laughs> yeah? I thought we were going to get like a cute little game, but no, we've got story and stuff? What? <laughs> what the heck? Tomatake? And Oishi, what are you doing here? Wait, have we met Oishi yet? <laughs> at, this, at the time this scene occurs in the game, they haven't met Oishi yet, right? <laughs> I do not remember. Tomitake? Wrong. I am no longer Tomitake. Call me Tommy. T Tommy? And instead of Oishi, I prefer to be called Cloud. Cloud Strive. <laughs> I can understand calling Tomatake Tommy, but what with Oishi and Cloud? Makes him sound like some dreaming soldier with a split personality. My given name is Corrado, which sounds like Cloud. Does it make sense to you now, youngin? I didn't have their voices prepared. I, I, I'm just like, I'm so caught off guard by all this. <laughs> Tomatake and Oishi suddenly show up and want me to call them by these sketchy names? What the heck? is going on here? Now, Keichi, didn't you resolve to master Rena's amazing punches barely a minute ago? You did now, didn't ya? It's right here in the script, see? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, that resolve part was more of a figure of speech. I wasn't really planning to challenge her, but ow! You're such a wimp, Keichi. There's nothing more pathetic than a red-blooded Japanese boy who just puts up with getting beaten by a girl. A wimp, but Tomatake! Ow! Oh. Tommy! Call me Tommy already. It feels silly to call him that, but if he's going to hit me every time I don't, I might as well start getting used to it. But Toma Tommy! Uh, the Who seminal double album! <laughs> featuring such classics as Pinball Wizard! There's just no way to see, much less avoid red as punches. You expect me to master them? That's impossible! It's true that her attacks are difficult to perceive, but that's an obstacle you can surmount, Keichi. But, but c c Cloud, you know I don't have that kind of skill. Oh, well, yes, you do, Sonny. Ah, Cloud will guarantee it. And so here will Tommy. I don't really get these two. They're all fired up for some reason. They're trying to sell me on some kind of training program? Our regimen will develop your visual acuity and reflexes. You'll start slow at first, and then gradually speed up. Once you've passed all three levels, the superhuman reflexes sleeping within you shall be fully awakened. Fully awakened? Do you really think I have that much potential? Tommy and Cloud's eyes flamed with passion, like the ideal gym teacher from some TV drama. One heartbeat later, Tommy gave me his answer. Your doubts are perfectly natural, Keiichi. Since any statement could be either the truth or a lie, 
It's reasonable to be skeptical until you're able to tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Even so, Maybera, in this world, they have formed communication built entirely on truths. Do you know what that is? Huh? They felt bewildered for a moment. That's when they began to whirl round, shining with a blinding white light. The one and only form of communication completely free of lies is... Discourse Between, between men. men. Parents, teachers, weather forecasts, and sample test questions. All of these may lie to you, but never shall we. Joy and anger, pathos and humor, excitement, sadness, romance, and even dawn passion. Only men with who truly share your values can conversation transcend the issue of truth versus falsehood. Me and Cloud, even you, Keichi, we all share one spirit, for we are... Soul, Soul Brothers! Brothers. A bolt of lightning shot through me, and then hot magma came welling up from deep within my heart. Had there have been men who would speak to me of such passion? No, never. Theirs was the passion I had sought for so long. Tommy, Cloud, moved to tears. We locked together in a manly embrace. Now, getting back to the topic at hand. <laughs> I'm so confused. Why is What's there? What's there to be confused about? The Rena Power Punch Simulator, or for short, Rena Pow. It features a virtual Rena that will throw punches again and again, allowing you to practice dodging her blows. All right, how does this thing work? Do we use a mouse? Right, use your mouse. If a punch comes flying in from the right, then right click. If a punch comes from the left, dodge with a left click. So I click the side that it's coming from, got it. Right click for punch from the right, left click for punch from the left. That sounds easy. But it's not just about avoiding the blow, it's also a matter of timing. Try not to click until just before the punch is about to hit. From time to time she'll throw a faint or slow punch. Don't get impatient now, you hear? Wait for her fist to get close before you click. You like she throws faints too? This is going to be so easy after all. For best results, try clicking with your index and middle fingers, though some may find it more comfortable to use the index fingers of both hands. Use whatever works for you. It's gonna be so weird because we have an ergonomic mouse, so I can't like. Is uh, it? How do you how do you have? Maybe I'll put this over here and like do like that. Oh, maybe I'll do that. Does the cur does the cursor position matter? Not at all. Just right click and left click. Well, <laughs> that's all there is to it. Uh huh. All right. I got the gist of it. The rest I'll just have to learn by do doing. You'll need to avoid 100 punches in order to clear this stage. Don't worry, even if that sounds like a lot, it'll be over before you know it. You can do it. Well then, let's give it a try. Oh, well then, let's give it a try. Are you prepared, May Barrel Saiyan? Oh, yes, sir. No, no. Cloud wagged his finger in admonishment. Ours is a relationship that transcends the boundaries of age. There ain't no need for useless formalities. Uh, such warmth within my heart. I no longer feel an age difference between us. For these men and I, no, we are soul brothers. Okay, let's try that again. You ready, Keichi? You bet I am, Tommy. The three of us clinched the deal with a firm thumbs up. Where'd Mion go, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's over there in the ditch, just really mad at herself right now. <laughs> well, well then, shall we begin? Renapow. Ready, set, go! Go! Okay. I'm gonna advise you to put the mouse over it. Oh. Ten. This is so strange. <laughs> 20. Why is she in such an outfit? Wait, that was a right punch as well? <laughs> Why was she coming from up top? Okay. What? Oh. Why is she wearing this outfit? I don't know. Is this a thing? It's a mystery. 
Is it a mystery? I really need you to be carrying the talking here. I don't have that much to say. There's just fists flying. No! <laughs> God damn it. I got I got hit by the fate. Damn. Oh, this is so... I would be so bad at this. This is literally stressing me out just to look at. Yeah, it's rough. All right. Hold on. I'm in the zone. I'm in the flow state. Yeah. You love to see it. Okay, hold on. I got this. Yeah, you do. You absolutely I have got this. this. Look at that. Halfway point. I got this. Sixty. No! Oh, the slow I got punch. Hit with the sl that was so slow. Oh. How was it so slow? There's just no explanation for her outfit. She just looks like this, huh? Yeah. All right, hold on. We're trying this again. Grudge match. Ready? If I can clear one level of this, I will feel... Yeah. And you already made it to, like, what, 80? That's, like, 90% of the way there. That's not how that works, honey. <laughs> Forty. Yeah, that's right. Hype me up. Hype me up. Oh, the slow punch. Slow punches are so slow. Yeah, they're like agonizingly slow. Why does she look so happy when she's doing it? Hey. Seventy. Oh God, fake me out there. Oh, God. 80. All right, here we are. Oh, uh, no, don't 90. fake me out like that. That's cheating. 100. Good. <laughs> wow, I did it. All right. <laughs> you did it. I did have to hold the mouse in a weird way to do it. I would... So to explain how I was doing it, we have a vertical mouse and I was holding it in my lap and then using both thumbs. <laughs> like they said, it's do it whatever way works for you. Ah, <laughs> uh, was it, Keiichi? Oh, that was bewildering at first, but no big deal once I got used to it. It was a piece of cake, Tommy. Why was she dressed like that, though? Just as I expected, mate, Barra san I thought you were just right away, but you're certainly a quick study now, aren't you, kiddo? You really shouldn't take me lightly, Cloud. The more fired up I get, the more it brings out my best. <laughs> All right, that's the spirit. Tommy slapped me on the back. I felt hot enough to burst into flames. Now we advance to level two. The difficulty is a bit high, my bearer, though it shouldn't be enough to crush someone like y'all now. Even so, remain on guard. The rare singular y'all. <laughs> <laughs> the rare singular y'all, yeah. What? Although not that rare, because all y'all exist. So I, f I forgot. True. I forgot. Singular y'all singular y'all is normal. His words made me slightly nervous, but not the least bit anxious. Give me anything you got. Keep up the good fight, kiddo. Three of us give each other a firm thumbs up. Well then, let's get back to it. Run a pow. Ready, set, go. go. Oh, God. All right, we're back in it. All right. How many do I have to do this time? I bet it's still a hundred. It's starting faster. Brutal. Ain't that bad once you get into it. Fuck! Why did I say anything? <laughs> Why did I say anything? I should have just, like... Oh, my, my mouse wasn't in the... <laughs> They said it didn't matter where my mouse was placed. I mean... <laughs> they lied to me. Usually it matters if the mouse is in the window for a program or if you're clicking into a different thing. Does it? 
the upside down one got me. I admit that. That's on me. I'm just impressed. How does she punch upside down? I don't know. I don't think you can punch upside down. I've tried. Doing the fucking break into dancing on the ceiling routine, but with punches. Yep. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's harder. It's harder. Also, I keep getting distracted by the fact that she's wearing the R07 leotard. <laughs> <laughs> like, again, having come from Umineko, it feels like this is something we see a lot. I and mean, we have to give it to somebody. Do we? Yeah. Why not Rena? I guess that's fine. Good for her, right? Really, they should have given the R07 leotard to Oishi. That's who should have gotten it. Give him a banana leotard. Slow punch. I like how there's motion blur on her fist even when it's slow. Yeah. Even her slows are fast. Hmm. That's the fastest slow punch I ever did see. <laughs> big, big boulder the size of a small boulder energy. <laughs> All right. Slow punch the speed of a fast punch. Slow punch the speed of a fast punch. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We're in it, we're in it. Oh, so slow. Hey. Hey. All right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, okay. I'm feeling good. You feeling fired up? Huh? Filled with the power of the Soul Brothers? I am. All, All right. right. That was much faster than level one. However, it didn't bother me nearly as much. I could see her fists as they were coming. I merely needed to relax and dodge. The occasional miss was more the fault of my fumbling fingers than lack of attention. My mind and eyes were already up to speed with Rena's punches. All that practice is really paying off. You've gotten much more confident. I can keep going, Tommy. Let me have that third and final stage. I'll have a present for you, Maid Bearer, if you manage to clear level three. A present? Well, what is it? Nah, ah, ah. You'll just have to wait until after you're finished now, you hear? All right, let's charge you to level three. It's the very last stage now. Be sure to keep your guard tied. She really won't be going easy on you this time. That's fine. I wouldn't underestimate my opponent. Let me at him. First, let me explain something, Maid Bearer. This level features a special move you ain't encountered yet. It's called RFI, Ryan Rena Fantasy, Fantasy Impact. Impact. What kind of a move is that? If you consider all the punches so far as restrained attacks from mid-range, the RFI would be a full force close range attack. Much more aggressive technique. You mean she's been pulling her punches this whole time? You won't even see her fist. Attack comes so quickly, Keiichi, that it can only be seen as a flash of light. Ren, as earlier punches were unavoidable, then this technique is best styled as imperceptible. A whole new special move, completely different from her earlier attacks. Could I really master it? Please calm down. Just a bit ago, you couldn't have detected even that much. But as you are now, my Bara, you can see the light. So, see it. Do it, Keiichi. Just do it. Anyway, when you see the flash, don't panic. Just act as you have all along. If the flash comes from the right, then right-click. Oh. <laughs> if it's from the left, then left click. Please try to stay calm. I right clicked when they told me to right click. I like that it's skip to next choice point. We have not seen a single choice point, right. and I have a strong feeling we never uh, will. Oh, God damn it. Stop making me nervous. Don't you have any tips for handling this attack? Hmm. Just one, if any. Only the RFI attack can be unleashed within close range. That is to say, she won't be able to use her feint attacks from that stance. True, I've had a lot of trouble with those. At least you won't have to deal with feints, too. That just might work to your advantage. Still, a close in stance with no feints, no half-hearted moves, purely confident of smashing the enemy straight on. It's no less than the ultimate attack mode. Guess I'll just have to give it a shot. I won't worry about beating it the first time, though. Just relax and go with the flow. <laughs> Once you master the final level, you will have your reward. I promise it. Yeah! I can't wait! Are you all set, then? Ready when you are, Cloud. The three of us gave each other a firm thumbs up. Well, then, let's get this over with. Rena Pow, ready, set, go! go. 
All right, wish me luck. I wish you the most luck. You can do it. <laughs> Just getting it out of the way early. Yeah, got to get it got to get it out quick. Wow, that's fast. Fifty halfway. Fuck! She got me. She got me. <laughs> the faint. Still halfway point. I think I can do this. Yeah, this feels very doable. This feels doable. I, 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 I can feel the power within me. I haven't seen the special attack yet, though. Which is neither have I. Terrifying. But I want the reward. I don't know what the reward is, but yeah. I want it. I barely see the feints at this point because they're so fast. Fuck. Oh, that was close. You said the word faint. <laughs> and I made you think it was a faint? Yep. Okay, I'll just be quiet. No, don't be quiet. Don't okay, be Okay, I'll just be loud and disrupt you. There you go. That's exactly what I need. Okay. Because if you're loud and disruptive, then I just don't even think about it. I'm just in the zone. I see. With weird look on your face. This is how I'm stored in their database. <laughs> I... <laughs> 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 All right, well, I've successfully fucked it up. There goes my flow state. Oh, no, okay. no, 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 no. We're getting this. We're going to we're going to we're going to get there. Whatever it may be, we're going to get it. It's going to be a fantastic prize. You think so? Oh, absolutely. I have no idea what the fuck the prize is. It's probably great, though. Could be something like the satisfaction of a job well done. True, I do like that. Crisp high five. You're just naming the <laughs> the rewards for returning my moleskin notebooks. That's why those are stuck in my head. It is the rewards for returning your notebook. I don't know why they have a, if found, please return for a reward of, and then a dollar sign immediately in it. It's like, how presumptuous do you have to be? Whoa! That was right. Oh, 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 I misunderstood what was about to happen. Gotcha. Okay, so I when think. she does that, I have to transition to... Got it. And that happens at 80 punches. Oh. Wait, what? It just started there? <gasps> You're not in the window. Oh, right. Shit. Oh, it, it checkpoints you. That's nice of them. Okay. It wasn't right? That one was right. I, ju I just clicked the wrong button. Okay. This is uh, I my my brain is not thinking about these right now. Hold on. Let me let me adjust my brain real quick. Fuck. This is shouldn't be this hard. <laughs> like it really shouldn't be. Okay, I have more time to adjust to hit these than I thought I did. There cool. we go. Oh, hey. It saved me there. That's nice of them. That's so kind of them. <sighs> hey, we did it. Or if I... What a terrifying attack. That had to be the Mount Everest of fighting moves. So then I finally reached the summit. You did, did it, Keiichi. Tell me in cloud, pound tell me when I took off the goggles. That was magnificent, a work of art. The very best, my bra. But of course, just who do you think I am? Say it loud. Keichi Maibara. Maybara. No, no. I wagged my finger in an elegant negation. So then, what is your name? I'm no longer Keichi Maibara. Henceforth, you shall know me as K. 
Sure thing, Keiichi. I mean, K. The three of us sent forth a cheer that would echo for all eternity. Well then, K, here's my present for you. Cloud it. Cloud had a small gift box. It opened up my touch. <gasps> Releasing specks of light that once rose into the sky. What was it? What just happened? Along with elation at your achievement, Kay, aren't you also feeling some small amount of desolation? Wait, what's that supposed to mean? Mastering the RFI was a great feat, Kay. However, don't you just feel a little bit sad at the loss of that gold? Sad me? Yeah, maybe I was. During those trials, it fits such calm and focusing, yet at the same time, such tremendous passion. Realizing I can no longer taste that sensation, yes, I did feel desolate. And this I will now give to you extreme mode. But they can keep going past the hundredth punch for an unlimited challenge. Whoa, extreme mode. And also choose between lower and higher speeds to make the game more interesting. That should be more than enough fun at your current level. True, the moment when I beat the hundredth, hundredth attack was all too brief. Despite my will to go on, the game had ended. But what if it didn't end there? Really, just how far would I go? It was an easy question. Of course I wanted more. I yearned to test my own limits. Scenario writer Ryu Kishio 7 once had the highest score of 265, but later, tester Minakami Toru attained the amazingly high score of 741. What? 741? How the heck did he manage that? Uh uh uh. All as the tallest mountains that make you want to climb, most want to climb them. That score doesn't look easy to beat now, don't it? <laughs> I can't have two voices right now, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> Damn it, bring it on! I'm sure I could break that record. Well then, we'll be leaving you for today. Please make sure to enjoy us extreme mode. Bye, Kay. We're only parting for a short while. We'll meet here again. Yeah, let's all meet again. But I might be dead when we get there. <laughs> <laughs> the four heavenly kings called by fate shall assemble at the promised land. A reunion is guaranteed. Anyway, that's that. How 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 was it? That was worth all the time we went to find it. <laughs> Absolutely worth it. For that wonderful, wonderful prize of extreme mode. I'm not going to play extreme mode. You can't <laughs> fucking make me. <laughs> Again, I just don't understand why Rena is the, fu uh, the weird Ryukishi outfit. I don't see what's to not understand. It's Hold on, I'm going to look up something. What are you going to look up? I'm going to look up the character Rena from Final Fantasy. Okay. I want to see if that's what her outfit is. It does not appear to be that. Okay. Rena from Final Fantasy. Although Rena from Final Fantasy does punch. I see. Yeah. Uh, so you know, never mind. Maybe that's it. Who knows? Either way, as you can see, we've got more mini games, but we'll save those for their respective arcs. Yeah. So thank you all for watching <laughs> Arc One of Higarashi. <laughs> As a reminder, please leave if you've got comments you want us to talk about in our in our speculation and theory crafting episode, uh, leave them in the Discord. There's notes in there on how to do it, so we'll take a look at them before we record the episode this weekend. <sighs> I'm both elated and depressed at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> they a really certain nailed desolation. it. Today. Bye, everyone. Smash, smash, smash that like, comment and subscribe.